Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we continue to send missions over to Mars and the first one we've got is a fairly simple one. We just want to send a resource scanner, our favorite sort of thing, so that we can find ore on Mars and we can exploit it with our drills and convert it to fuel. So, and uh, in here that should work just as normal as in stock Kerbal Space Program except that our resource converters can convert it to uh, methane and oxygen and uh, we might want to tweak the numbers on that conversion depending on how it works I've I've yet to find exactly numbers that I'm perfectly happy with but uh, anyway we will feel that out once we find some ore and this is a tiny little probe though plenty of Delta V in the tank uh, and storable MMH and Mon 3 and uh, we've got a relay antenna there and uh, um, Pretty sure that's a relay antenna and so we don't have to worry about comms and it'll serve as a communication satellite around Mars as well and we've got a reusable upper stage to try and transfer it so we will see how that works out or if that works out but we've got plenty of payload margin on this uh, this should be able to carry much more than that but we will see uh, so let us just launch and proceed okay we are lined up with the moon which should be good enough SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. Ah, I always forget to aim the camera at the Orion carrier plane, which would save us the camera jump there. We will be using the Duo, the dual Orion carrier plane launch vehicle, and we will use that to launch the Mini Q, which is something that can drill for ore on Mars, potentially. And we will see whether that works. Okay, turning some engines off and rolling. Oh, pretty good on the relative inclination if we were actually traveling to the moon, but you know, it's a good reference for an ecliptic. We are going really high because our payload is so light, I forgot to account for that. This Orion carrier plane would likely overshoot Cape Canaveral. But, um, well, we'll cut it there. A little bit slower than the 4,000 I usually aim for. Okay, RCS, RCS, please. Prograde. This was not good. But we have plenty of time to apoapsis. Okay, and go. Hmm, in reusable mode, this might still not have enough to do the job well yeah well we've got plenty of delta v in the probe anyway so it's fine we'll try to make sure that this gets theoretically reused okay and shut down we are in orbit to 257 or 258 by 207 and we have 2882 meters per second left so the probe will have to complete its transfer. 241 days this looks like. And I think I see the pole right there with the possible water ice, though no guarantee that that's where ore is because that's a different resource. And even if we did have the resource water, which I think USI would add, um, then it is no guarantee it would map the resources in the right place. That seems like a pretty easy capture to me. Uh, yeah, just about 2,000 to get to low orbit. That's pretty remarkable, actually. Uh, almost so remarkable that I think it's lying. But uh, we will we'll go with that. All right, well, close enough. Go. And again, for those not familiar, these are SC2025 AV engines uh, from the Shearstrut engine pack. Uh, 250 kilonewtons, 367 second ISP with methane and oxygen. So about 1,000 kilonewtons altogether, or uh, roughly all combined would be one uh, Prometheus vacuum engine from ESA, the European Space Agency. Okay, I'll reserve some for this thing's deorbit, the Star Stage 2. Oh, why is it not shutting down? Hmm, that was weird. 
Okay, we reserved less than I thought we would, but uh, we've still got some. Should be able to deorbit. And separation. And we lost a node, of course we did. And... Well, just go prograde. And we'll try to ignite right away. And just sort of eyeball it. Oh, the RCS is not active. Whoops. Well, we got 6,000 in here, so plenty enough. Well, since our original plan went away, it's a little bit hard to see exactly where we're supposed to be at here. Well, close, but not quite. We'll see if we can fix that at, at the mid-course adjustment. Okay, pretty polar there. And still, well, it's 1,500 to make a fairly tight orbit, so still pretty good. Again, right over that icy patch on top of that pole. Not quite over this icy patch, but pretty close. Okay, so this will be the mid-course adjustment for it. And it is on its way. Let's make sure it's nice and recharging. In the sunlight, though, with a huge solar panel like this, basically meant to counterbalance the antenna. And it's definitely got plenty of electric charge. And yeah, so this maneuver can be added to the alarm. Right, and let's see about the return of star stage 2. 59 meters per second is not a whole lot. Okay, and apoapsis, retrograde. Yeah, I throttled down, but it didn't seem to shut down when I throttled down. Oh, oh, what, what, what are you doing? It boosted our orbit up. Gosh darn it. Ah, what is going on here? We should have been controlling from the same direction. Uh, somehow it switched directions on me, even though I have no idea why it would switch directions on me after the fact. But now with 10 meters per second, we definitely don't have enough. Uh, fail. We certainly would have had enough otherwise. They probably should have just used RCS. Okay, well, it's just going to be a derelict for now. I won't clean it up. We'll have we'll have debris. We might think about debris mitigation things later. All right, let's launch something else. Okay, so next up we have the Mini Q, which is a lander that can land on Mars and drill for ore, replenish its own fuel supply and then lift off again back to Mars orbit. It has the ISR unit built in, so that's convenient. So we sort of have models. I can't really show it right now, but anyway, it's got the air intake for the CO2 for the Sabatier process, etc. Uh, we've got a radiator, which seemed to be large enough for the purpose, uh, though how those things are calculated are beyond me. And we have some parachutes just in case. Uh, because just under engine thrust, it has a little bit of trouble making sure that it uh, can land properly. So we have those. And you see the drills. We have the nozzles currently oriented in landing position. We'll probably just leave it like that. And some aerodynamics to help out with the aerodynamics. So, yeah, we are fully fueled with that. And that seemed to be doable with our transfer stage, which is right here. That's... Uh, hydrogen and oxygen transfer stage that is expendable and of course with the duo as is and as in the previous video we are going to try to make sure that the first stage is just the Orion carrier planes and we will also start off the descent of the engine package but we probably won't follow that back down so all right with all that said making sure nobody's in the seats. This is the version of the Mini-Q that is purely pass-through, so we're pointing that out. Um, I don't know about its internal communications, actually. Perhaps it's a good idea to toss on a dish in addition to everything else. Yeah, I would rather make sure to have a nice, powerful, always open one than try to use the Commutron 88-88, which might break. It's not actually much different in mass. 
it's uh, much much weaker it is a relay but the level 2 DSN 56.1 gigameters is 0 0.055 tons 55 kilograms and the one I just put on is 60 kilograms but has much greater range and is still a relay so and it won't break off in atmosphere so I think this is all good all right now with that let's go with it I think I time warped a bit too much I wanted to move the Boca Chica terrain a little bit further down so that we could see things okay that's marginally better all right okay now with the pad actually visible I think we're a little bit late but we'll just go we're not uh, bothering too much with the recovery of the Orion carrier planes yet I did enough of that in the previous video and right now we aren't even packing the jet engines so we are uh, expanding them let's just not talk about it okay so SAS on throttle is up and ignition Yeah, I still have to do further tests on how to recover the Orion carrier planes when they're in this configuration. I don't know, Boca Chica seems drier than usual. It's like it's going with the seasons or something. That was like greener. Oh, 75 degrees, please. Okay, igniting the core. shutting off the boosters. Well, I thought we would be shutting off the boosters, but uh, looks like I forgot to action group them again. Or this subassembly did not have those engines action grouped. And fairings. <laughs> With all the stuff it has. Oh, the little radiator extended automatically. Well, I guess that's all right now. But with all the stuff that it has on top of it, the mini Q it doesn't have the streamlined streamlined look that I was going for. <laughs> I mean, I should have that all built in somehow, or some sort of more camouflaged module, if you will, something that fits in with the color of it or something. It all pokes out a little bit too much right now. Okay, and shut down. I think we'll have the payload finish orbit, so... Okay, we are in orbit with 4,200 in this stage. And of course, this stage isn't oriented properly to check its delta V because the nozzles are poking down. I want to keep them like that so that we can verify the balance before we get there. Uh, make sure that it's got the right sort of situation. And anyway, we are going to, we've got the parachutes there. Let me just arm the parachutes right away. This is already suborbital. But we can get more suborbital. We already tested this before. Well, actually, I want it the other way around. So yeah, this should easily be able to control where it sets down if we had NASA involved. So I'll just leave it be here. The mini queue named Miku. Well, looks like the robotics are working for me this time. Not always a guarantee. Probably I should wait until after the transfer to extend these, but... I'm sure there's enough battery and everything, but you know, let's just go like this. Well, I don't know where exactly the ore is going to be, but for now we're going to put it into a prograde orbit. And roughly in line with Phobos is the idea. Now it should be able to aero capture, but we also probably have plenty of propellants to propulsively capture around Mars. And we would really like to use that propellant before landing because landing with it would overwhelm the parachutes if we decide to use them. That's pretty, pretty good as far as being in line with Phobos, isn't it? Anyway, we can fine-tune it on the actual burns. This is good enough for now. 17 minute burn time though. It's one of those Hydrolox stages. Well... 
how accurate could a 17 minute burn have been anyway. Okay, we're on escape and this has been such a long burn, not to mention the fact that I started late. That we should probably pay attention to when it actually hits Mars's orbit to stop it in time. The mini cube will of course have to do the mid-course adjustment and we are hoping that it doesn't have much boil off. That is not necessarily going to be the case. Okay, well, it looks okay. We'll have to reassess the mid-course adjustment though. But let's separate first. Okay, not the parachutes though. That's for later. They're just drogue chutes, no main chutes. We're relying on the engines for the main part of the landing. And... Separation. Separation. Okay, and we will want to control from this docking port. And it is our control point for the engines in landing position. RCS works. 44 tons here. I'm tempted to test the engines right now to see the balance, but they'll just throw things off. Well, maybe they're already thrown off, though. Maybe I can come up with some sort of maneuver that might help a little bit. Well, if it doesn't do any harm, maybe we can just waste that fuel to test the thing. Okay, trying this at low thrust. Well, full thrust, it's using about 40% of the pitch, but it's all right. Not the best, though. But we can probably call that acceptable. At least for this to go around. And we can tweak it later. Boil off, though. That's annoying. Maybe I should have packed a bigger radiator, after all. Okay, we've replied our fairly nice pass at Mars with this. And we can add that alarm. And we'll just come back to it when it's time to do the mid-course adjustment. Alright, well, I'm going to take a look at the St. Louis and see where we are with that. And maybe if we can start it on its way. Alright, so we are here with the St. Louis. And I'm going to do part of the burn first because, well ion engines and we might as well we've got an eight hour period right now we could probably extend that to a nearly two day period so we'll go around one orbit and then do the final exit burn we'll have to be a little bit careful about the timing on this to keep the existing maneuver correct we might want it closer to our actual periapsis though so if we could manage that somehow that would be great but let me just uh, point at the node. But you can see it's changing things quite a lot just by turning, so... Yeah, it's complicated. Okay, ion engine ignition. And yeah, it'll mess that up for now. And hopefully we can solve that later. At least our apoapsis is lifting. I don't think we're gonna get it two days just on this bit. Okay, replot time. Okay, we've got a replot with a node in 8 hours and 31 minutes. We have to do 1600 meters per second. We are not gonna be able to do that just with the ion engines. It is time to light the nuclear engine. Or engines. Uh, engines. Two of them. Uh, well, maybe we can light them closer to the node that start with the ion engines. We'll do it that way. Okay, we should have enough. I think the boil-off might be on this back tank, which doesn't have any MLI layers. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping these are well controlled. It seems like this one is. It doesn't show any boil-off loss. Same here. So, might just be that back tank. And I've set it to a higher priority. So... 
I mean, we would like to have some of that available for the capture on Mars or even the return. So uh, we're starting this burn aimed directly at Earth. Hello, Africa. Um, it's weird, but this is how orbital mechanics works. Okay, maneuver node, throttle up, ion engines for maybe the first hour or so. Hardly any delta V will be prov provided by them, but you know, they're pushing a lot of liquid hydrogen at the moment. Okay, we will now activate, well, let's stroll down first. Activate the nuclear engines. Settling the fuel down. And go. It says start burn in 11 minutes, but I don't think with this kind of thrust we are going to get it done in, in that kind of time, so I think I've got it right here. We have to do fizz warp at this point. And we're finally going, folks. It's been a while putting this together. And will Folo, Flo and Barbert actually survive this journey to Mars and back? Well, we'll find out. Strictly speaking, Delta V-wise, we're fine. But a lot of that Delta V is in ion engines. And so that gets more complicated. Supplies, we're fine. Three years should be enough. The return is in 490 days from now, and then it'll take a certain amount of time after that to get back. Uh, it looks like 285 days. So you sum it up, the three years should cover it. And we've already got other supplies on the way there. If we can swing by Phobos and Deimos, they could just use their EVA packs to land on Phobos and Deimos. You can make a Phobos and Deimos landing without even having a spacecraft. Potentially. But there's a trick to that. The orbits around Phobos and Deimos are so slow that can get complicated getting back and everything while they are just on their own food, water, and oxygen. So, something to think about. We were a little bit early on this burn. Okay, well, camera change indicating that we're on escape. We are on escape. We're gonna be passing by the moon, it looks like. Within a day. Well, the match between our orbit and the target orbit, the one we wanted, is looking pretty good. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to turn off the nuclear engines now. And see if we can do the rest with just the ions. It's tricky. Uh, we're still passing by periapsis here. Might have been a bad idea to try this. No, we no longer have a moon encounter, it looks like. Hope it wasn't helping a whole lot or something. Okay, I think that's all I'll do right there and let's see if we can get the encounter with the mid-course adjustment. Well, a little bit of tweaking might be necessary. 333 days though is a little bit longer than I was expecting. Uh, maybe if we burn a little bit more with the ions right now. 314 days, I'll take that. Let's see if we can refine that a bit. Since we weren't planning on staying on the surface for very long, it is mostly a flyby mission. It doesn't really matter how long it takes for us to get there. 318 days now. Well, at least it's a thing. So 840 we'll have to do on a mid-course adjustment. And here... We will capture loosely with uh, 500, or we could bring it down to Deimos orbit or Phobos orbit. Let's see what Phobos orbit is. Phobos orbit will take 1,100, so let's say uh, 2,000 when combined. And then our planned return 
after basically a whole year's worth of stay, because 318 days, and then we return in 689 days. So that's basically a year around Mars. And what I see here is uh, ejection delta V of 2,625 and insertion around Earth 2020. Though insertion, we don't know exactly how it's doing that because we could have a very loose insertion. So we're looking at needing a total of 6,645. We currently have 6,614. <laughs> Uh, but that's all right. That's all right because we, uh, which call it, we will be using some food, water, and oxygen during that time, and you know, in a pinch, we'll use RCS or something. Uh, so yeah, in the end, we will manage it somehow. So this is finally on its way to Mars. We will add the mid-course adjustment alarm, and we will see what happens. Uh, next video, we'll probably send a few more things over to Mars. Uh, to chase after it, and then we will follow all the missions along the way. We've got some mid-course adjustments to pay attention to, and we'll see how it all does. Though, perhaps in the midst of all that, we should be launching other pieces for the next ship that will be going to Mars, right? We might as well get that prepared as well. Though we could do that while this is hanging around Mars. There's plenty of time. Uh, that's one thing about Mars transfer windows is there's a long time between them. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.